Breaker Broke 23. Today we're going to take a quick look at the FX Audio DAC X6 Mark II. This is a Bluetooth audio receiver, DAC, and headphone amplifier. This piece comes in at about $79 on Amazon. I'll leave a link to that down below. Let's get started. On the front panel, we have a MFB multifunction button. This is push and hold for two seconds, it turns it on. Push and hold for two seconds, it turns it off. Momentary push, we will be able to toggle between Bluetooth, USB input, optical input, and coaxial input. These are little red uh, LEDs here, and they're not too bright and overwhelming. In the center here, we have a gold-plated uh, quarter-inch headphone jack, and that is a stereo headphone jack, of course. Over here, we have our bit rates over here from 44K to 192K. Back here are these little micro holes with blue LEDs behind each one of those. So it'll show uh, what bit rate we are going in. And it is also a um, level indicator for volume. Okay. So when you turn the volume up, as you go up each step, it'll go up in an LED. Once you've let go of the volume control and let it sit for two seconds, then it goes away and you go back to your bit rate. So that's really neat. The little blue tape on here is just as a marker that I use in testing and evaluation, and I'll show you what that's all about um, towards the end of the video. On the rear panel, we have a SMA connector on the antenna, and unfortunately, this is a RP SMA, so this is a reverse polarity SMA. And um, what that means is most of these antennas now come out with the SMA connector with the center conductor in there um, that sticks out. And that's actually what makes connection in the female side. So this is a male side normally, and then this would be a female. However, in this particular setup being reverse polarity, the little center pin conductor is on the board side, and this is a female. So. It's kind of goofy, not really liking that. I really wish they did not do that because uh, sometimes you just want to mess around. I mean, I do anyway, because I'm into Bluetooth and I just want to mess around with uh, different antennas and see if I can get better range. What antenna works better? So I would like to have seen that a standard SMA connector. On the back here, we also have the PC USB input. So you can plug this in to your computer. We have optical input coaxial input and then over here for output section we have analog output only and this is uh, red is right and white is left and yes they're backwards as in most any Chinese product out nowadays I do not, do not understand why they do that I wish it was flipped around and done the proper way over here we have our 5.5 millimeter um, old school coaxial type input connector and I really prefer these um, over the micro USB connectors. This comes with a AC wall adapter that has a very annoying blue status indicator telling you that this thing's plugged in and you can see this from outer space. So I wish the cord was a little bit longer as well. This is only about a two and a half foot long cord, but them using the right connector honestly makes up for this. I like the fact that when you plug these coaxial style connectors in, it goes in all the way. It sits flush with the unit and it is supposed to have a little bit of give. This is nice to have. If you're like me and I'm plugging and unplugging devices in all the time um, and maybe one falls out of your rack or something, with something like this with a little bit of give and these coaxial style uh, inputs, they don't break the uh, solder joints apart from these PC boards like some of the uh, micro USBs do. And I just prefer this. This is like 40, 45 year old technology, but I prefer this overall. Okay, so sound quality. This has pretty good sound quality. Remember, this is a $79 piece of gear. So it's not gonna be ultra, ultra high end, but it is a pretty good piece of gear. On both RCA analog output and the headphone amplifier output. This can be, in my opinion, 
um, a little forward sounding, possibly even a little harsh on some headphones in the upper mid-range area. The uh, high-end treble region is not overextended or anything like that, so that sounds pretty fair. Um, the low frequency is a little overextended for my taste. However, if you're a bass head, maybe this is uh, good for you, or maybe you have uh, a set of headphones that just doesn't have too good a low end in it. I think this might help out a little bit, so um, not bad at all. It has plenty of amplifier power to drive the highest impedance headphones you have. This the, You could go really super, super high, 600 ohms, and I think you're gonna get plenty of volume out of this. My headphones are like 47 ohms, and um, it just goes crazy, crazy, crazy loud. In fact, it brings out that um, forward mid-range a little too much. So maybe if you have some high impedance headphones, um, it, it might not be quite uh, so bad. Anyway, and that also, like I said, carries off into the uh, RCA output as well. Now, most modern higher end Bluetooth receivers have a full 2, 2.1 volt RCA output, meaning it will drive your stereo preamplifier or receiver at about the same volume as say an outboard CD player or a VCR or even a TV. Um, this actually is rated at two or 2.1 volts, I can't remember, but this actually goes a little bit louder than like my iFi uh, Zen Blue. It goes louder than my Audio Engine B1, my Blue, De Blue Dento BLT HD, and the RS Blue Me HD. So this has a, a nice, healthy preamplifier output. And like I say, that is variable from the front knob on the headphone amp and on the rear here as well. So that's kind of fun to play around with, actually. I like the idea of these being adjustable. Also, you could use this and say power uh, or, or control some powered speakers. So you would plug the RCAs into your powered uh, bookshelf speakers, maybe even use a Y connector off of this and feed it to a subwoofer. And then you could have full sub satellite system with this being your main volume control and you could use bluetooth for all of your um, audio files or you could plug this in to your computer um, i've used this on my laptop i've used this on my home computer and it's really fun to, to play around with your bit rate and everything on the computer on my little laptop, it's got a pretty lame audio card in it. It's, okay, extremely lame. It sounds terrible when I plug my headphones into it. However, when I tie this unit into my laptop, everything comes alive. And for two reasons. Obviously, because this has more uh, amplifier output to drive headphones better. Um, and the bit rate, by changing your bit rate, is more noticeable on this piece of gear. When I plug this into my Dell, my big tower PC that I do most of my video editing on, um, it's not quite the impact. Uh, it doesn't quite have the impact that it does off of my laptop. And I need to go rein, uh, reinvestigate what kind of audio card I have into my uh, home computer because it... It does pretty darn good. I'm I'm actually pretty impressed. So um, anyway, this can uh, be a really good upgrade. So really, this has a couple things that I don't like about it. I don't like this rotary encoder just continuously turning. And that's why I have the marker on here. So I guess at the end of the video, I'll show you that. And unfortunately, spoiler alert, I am going to have to send this back to Dr. Evil. Um, it's got to go back to Amazon and I'm gonna return it not for a refund, but for an exchange. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because this is Bluetooth 5.0 technology here. And this thing only, I can only get about nine or 10 feet away from it with my uh, cell phones, uh, that, and that's including my Apple phone and my Android phone and my laptop. I just don't have very good receive range for that. Now these are not adjustable internally, so I'm gonna hopefully say it's not a design flaw and I'm just gonna say maybe I have a component that's not to spec or something like that, and that is inhibiting the range 
on the Bluetooth reception here, so I'm not really sure. Oh, and there was a interchangeable uh, IC in here, and I think it was for the DAC, and um, apparently you can take some tweezers and plug an upgraded chip into there if you would like. I really don't know. Um, you know, this is a $79 piece of gear. I don't know if you really want to mess around with stuff like that, but they did opt for that, and it does have some high-quality components in there. Um, it's got like a, what is it? It has a Qualcomm um, um, chip for uh, Bluetooth and all of that. But I think what really bums me out is going back to this uh, reverse polar polarity SMA. See, the thing is, is I can't figure with that bad uh, range, I can't really determine if it's the antenna that's doing it or if it's internal, because I can't take any of my other antennas off my other Bluetooth receivers. They're longer, supposedly higher gain antennas, and try it on here. So I'm not really sure if it's this that's that's um, hurting the range or if it's internal. So unfortunately, she's got to go back to Amazon. So I'm going to exchange this, and I'm going to test another piece of gear, and I will let you guys know if um, the new replacement unit actually uh, works better. Because if it doesn't, I'm gonna let you guys know and I'm gonna return that one and we're just gonna move on to something else. So anyway, uh, $79 and change off Amazon. Um, I really like the headphone amp in it. That is pretty cool. I'm just now getting into that rabbit hole of headphone audio. And so I'm gonna be reviewing more units like this. All right, let's go into the uh, front room and um, we'll go on my main home receiver and I'll show you what I'm talking about, about the volume control and the limited range for Bluetooth. And that'll wrap up the okay, video. Okay, this is uh, what I wanted to show you as far as the quirky volume control and the reason why I marked this. So I've got my song playing here. This is a, a YouTube copyright free track, one of my favorite ones. It's all my shuffling from Silent Partner. And watch the revolution count. Count this marker here. show you the range. We're just going to walk about 10 feet away from the receiver. Oh, I didn't even get 10 feet before it starts cutting out. And there we go. That's it. All right, you guys. Now I'm turning it down with the phone. Thanks for watching. Please leave questions or comments down below. Overall, I think it's a good piece of gear. I just think it has that quirk with the range and um, and the uh, rotary encoder here. I would have honestly liked to have just seen just a standard volume control on here. And another thing too, because this is a vintage receiver, I have this so it switches on and off with the power plug. So whenever I turn this on and off, it turns this on and off, right? Well, what happens is every time you shut it down, it resets that volume control. And I would have just like to see an old school, just a regular 5K pot on here, where this being no volume, and this being up all the way, and then you can just leave it alone. However, this rotary encoder also acts as a mute button, and I forgot to mention that in the earlier review. So we'll show that feature and then be done with it. So that mutes it. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Please leave questions or comments down below.